and welcome to the second episode of the new series of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show with me, Janna McCabe. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Donna Rudd from Antrim Town Women and Tony Lee Finnegan from Cliftonville. Thank you both for joining me today. Well, now the dust has kind of settled in the Northern Ireland game, you were both there. What did you think of it? Donna, you first. Well, I was, I was there as a supporter. Um, like, I think the girls did a great job. We were up against a very good team. You know, Ireland just came away from the World Cup. So, um, first half an hour, I thought we did. We were probably the better team. It just didn't seem to go our way. Two quick goals and, you know, unfortunately, we never really got back in the game. But, you know, I think in, when you look at, back at the game, you can see sort of the difference in the quality and at some areas, but like, I think it's only a stepping stone for us to learn and you know, come January time again when we're back in. Um, it's just, it was incredible to watch, I think. It was incredible to watch so many fans there and having uh, Ireland along and the fact that it's a, a derby, you know, when we're ever gonna see that again. Um, so yeah, no, like, it was a bit brutal at times, but I think in the long run, maybe the best team probably won, unfortunately. Tony Lee. Yeah, um, I agree. I think they were definitely the better team in the first, well, we were the better team in the first 25, 30 minutes. Um, I think if we had of sort of took our chances maybe a bit better in that first 25, 30 minutes, it would have been a different game. Um, obviously, they got one just before half time, uh, a deflection of one of our players, which is sort of scrappy. Um, um, after that first goal, if we had held on to the second half, maybe, but then they got another goal just before um, half time, which sort of just killed us. Um, but I think we can't take a lot of positives from it. I think Tanya hasn't been in for a very long time. Um, six games might feel like a long time, but when you're in the environment, it's definitely not, especially when you're trying to learn the new style of play and um, the new language that Tanya's bringing in to the squad. Um, it's difficult, so yeah, credit to the team. I thought they'd done really well, but obviously Ireland's just quality. You both kind of mentioned there the quality of Ireland. Like it was obviously, we were the dominant team for that first 30 minutes, but Katie McCabe's strike, I think my jaw was on the ground with it. It was just unbelievable. But I just think there were so many positives, particularly from that first 30 minutes. Donna, what were those positives? I think the positives were, and you know, obviously, I think Tony has touched on it, Tanya hasn't had that long of time in. And, you know, we could sort of see, see a bit of a style of play um, coming from the first 20, 30 minutes. And I think maybe it's just after that, we need to maybe learn about um, how we can be more consistent in the game and how we respond when we go down a uh, goal down. But, you know, I think, the squad as a whole, the fact that we're sitting here talking about different players and we all know their names, they know where, they, who, what team they play for. Um, and then having 6,000 like fans there, it was just incredible. You know, all those young girls there watching Northern Ireland players play, it's just, it's such a pathway, you know, for an incentive and that's a massive positive, you know. I think some more camps in, we'll definitely see the change and the fact that we're still talk we're talking about Northern Ireland women because we want them to strive to get another championship of some sort. Tony Lee, Tanya obviously hasn't been in that long. Can you see what her plan is? Yeah, I think being in and around the camp um, this past week, it's actually my first time meeting with Tanya and already I've learned so much um, about her style of play and how she wants us to play. Um, and especially the first 30 minutes, I've really seen it and, and I've seen how she wants to play and the, the Daphne implemented that in yesterday's performance. Um, but as Donna just said there, I think once they went 1-0 up, I think we need to sort of um, react better whenever that happens. But overall, it was a very good first half anyway. As somebody who's had no other experience like yourself, that must be really exciting that those kind of promising signs are starting to shine through. Yeah, definitely. It's so hard, you know, going and sitting in the stand and watching them um, but I'm always learning and it's good that I was in and around the camp you know learning off um, the experienced players and obviously Tanya being in you know she was with Chelsea women the past two three years who have done extremely well so it's good getting the experience and, and all the learning off them. 
the likes of those young players, Donna, the likes of Kerry Beatty, Kerry Halliday, and then the keeper Maddie Harvey Clifford last night, they're going to be so crucial for Northern Ireland pushing forward, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the size of the squad now for Northern Ireland women is, is incredible. And, you know, I think when you're coming from the NIWFA leagues and you're seeing some of those, girl, those girls coming through, the likes of Kerry Holiday, you know, I had the opportunity to um, put a team up against Kerry Holiday for a few years against Balamani and, you know, you could see the quality was completely different and the, the likes of that and in the under-19s and under-17s girls are doing so well. Um, I think it's, it's just going to, the squad's just going to get more competitive and more bigger, you know, and as I said, I can't, we can't wait to see Tony Lee back in and, and leading the way there with those young girls, which I, no doubt she will be. Tony, we're really hoping that you have a big part to play <laughs> I in know future camps. I was saying off camera that uh, I'm hoping in the future, whenever you're playing, that I will get first dibs in interviews, I'll get first dibs in everything, they'll tell me all the scope. But it must be exciting that you're expiring that next generation to come through and you're kind of seeing it grow and you're part of it, you're part of like the game changers. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously I'm still young myself, only 21, but the amount of kids that we inspire um, as 21 year olds is insane, um, going to the likes of summer camps and stuff like that and to be starstruck when they see you, even though like it's, um, we're nobodies basically, but Talking yourself down here, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but um, yeah, all the kids be starstruck when they see you. Um, at the games and stuff, they're running up, wanting selfies, wanting things like that. But just another thing um, about Tanya, obviously she's only in, so it's not even really us learning her style of play. It's, she hasn't really learnt about us yet as players. Yeah. No, I feel like sometimes I feel like she needs to sort of learn more about us and, and about other players, you know, before she can pick our best team and um, our best starting eleven and stuff. You obviously missed out in that squad in Southampton, unfortunately. Would you, that give you more willpower to move on and try to get into the squad for next major tournament with Northern Ireland? Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's every footballer's dream to play in major tournaments and to play against the best players in the world. Um, I was very disappointed back then um, when I didn't get selected, but it gave me more of a drive and I've been working really hard to get back in. Um, the likes of Carrie Beattie, we both didn't get in together and then she actually scored against Ireland. So we need to, I just need to keep working hard and hopefully my chance comes. We're going to take a little break here from the studio and we're going to catch up with Colin who last week caught up with some of the Northern Ireland players and manager after the Republic of Ireland game. Despite going into this fixture on a wave of optimism following Victor away to Albania only a few days earlier, the game against their counterparts from the Republic of Ireland proved a step too far for the Northern Ireland women's national team when the sides met recently at Windsor Park. After a pretty even start to the game, which saw the teams trading gentle punches with one another, the Republic eventually made the breakthrough on 38 minutes, when a Lucy Quinn shot from the edge of the box totally deceived homekeeper Maddie Harvey Clifford. Worse was then to follow for the home side only a minute later when on 39 minutes Heather Payne was allowed to drift in unmarked at the back post and she comfortably picked her spot to make it 2-0. Hopes of a second half comeback by Northern Ireland were dashed as early as the 47th minute when Kyra Caruza powered home past her marker to make it 3-0 from close range. 50 minutes and the crowd were treated to a real worldly of a strike as the Republic's captain, Katie McCabe, drifted in from the left before hamming a shot into the top corner of the net with her right foot. An absolutely classic strike. A Louise Quinn looping header in 60 minutes made it 5-0 before the home crowd were at last able to celebrate on 74 minutes when Kerry Beatty pulled one back after the Republic failed to clear a corner. The home euphoria, however, didn't last, as another Republic goal this time from Caitlin Haynes on 86 minutes, saw the game ending Northern Ireland women 1, the Republic of Ireland women 6. Here's Northern Ireland's manager Tanya Oxtoby and team captain Marissa Callan with their thoughts on the game. Yeah, I thought the first um, sort of 30 minutes that we were good. I thought we executed what we asked. Um, 
cause them some problems and then they, like a good team does, tweak things um, and we struggle to adapt to that. I think their first goal uh, is a deflected strike, so a little bit disappointing from that point of view to concede that, but we then need to do a little bit better because obviously conceding another one um, in short succession causes some problems going into half-time, but very positive at half-time. Players were really keen. We wanted to be um, aggressive uh, in the second half, and from our point of view, um, you know, the Republic found the spaces, and uh, that's what good teams do. Listen, I'm obviously got it at the result. Um, we come in with um, the belief that we could get a result from the game. We've had a fantastic week together. Um, we can start to see improvements, you know, individually and collectively. And um, I'm just got it at the result. I don't think the result reflected the game, but you know, if you make mistakes from that calibre of, of team, you're going to get punished. And I think that's what happened to us tonight. Look, they're a young, we're a young side, and um, I think understanding and decision making takes time when you've got a new manager in. I can't speak for the past. I can only speak for now. So from my point of view, the, the players will learn from that um, and we need to keep working. And I think the trust and the belief in making the right decisions and being able to deal and swing with momentum in football because it's going to happen, um, you know, that, that takes experience and um, I guess yeah, learnings like tonight to, to be able to, to deal with that. I think going into the game, you know, we really did have the belief that we could get the result. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go that way for us, but we have to take the positives. Um, we have, you know, we have to look ahead. We, again, are at the beginning of our journey and we can only improve every game, and I think we have done that. Um, unfortunately, the, the result doesn't really reflect that, but listen, we, we'll learn from it, we'll move on. Um, and. I'm excited for the future. I think we have a real good future ahead and you know we're we're really lucky to have a manager like Tanya in with us because you know she's a great manager and you know she has our sights set to get into a major tournament with our squad and I believe we'll be able to do that and we just have to keep improving every game. Thank you, Colin, for that. I heard a couple of complaints about how cold it was at Windsor. I hope you've finally defrosted a week on. We're back in the studio obviously now. Donna, we'll go back to the very start. How did you first get involved in women's football? Well, it's been a good few years now. Um, I actually kind of played. Well, I didn't really. I wasn't that good of a player. But um, I was involved with um, Knock Rita. Um, that's how I first got into coaching. Um, I played for Knock Rita and then um, I was asked to come on board to help coach a uh, team in Antrim. So it was another girl who played um, also with me at Knock Rita. Prior to that, I got into football through... Um, Belfast Banks it was called, so back in the day where it's Claire actually from the NIWFA, I used to play with her, um, but we were part of, obviously was, I worked in a bank and we got through that way and it was sort of women, older women playing football and then from that it just got, we moved into the NIWFA league and divisional leagues and yeah, so I just got the bug from that, so I was never a really good footballer. Um, but I suppose that's what they sometimes say about maybe good coaches, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but yes, so that's, that's how, I, and that was a long time ago now, so I think I've been coaching in the game. I think it's maybe 15 years, potentially, coming up to, so a long time. Yeah, you're certainly <laughs> no stranger to it. Tony Lee, what about yourself? How did you get into it? Um, so my best friend, growing up, actually lived around the next street, and he was always out playing football at the side of my house, so... I went out and started playing with him and then he took me down to the youth club, Willowbank. Um, and one of the guys down there actually says, go and tell him to put you in one of the team's training. So I went down and ever since then, I was like, when's the next session? When can I come back? Um, and it just sort of went from there. Um, I was playing for Willowbank boys during the winter, or sorry, during the summer. And then signing for Cliftonville ladies during the winter so yeah is that right yeah so I just kept going back and forward and back and forward um Marissa was actually my coach at Clivenville growing up so and now I'm playing the same team as her so it's amazing that must be so inspiring that somebody who actually coached you is now your captain yeah I don't think I would have been able to do it without her to be honest um she's always inspired me and you know she's took me under her wing basically from a kid the whole way up to now the senior international team um, that's the captain, so it's class. And the big question here is, were you better than the boys? You kind of have to say yes, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, my team growing up was actually really, really good. Um, we came second in the Northern Ireland Cup at under 15, so I wouldn't say I was one of the best players, but um, <laughs> I was definitely good, yeah. There must have been some Ronaldos in that team then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, 
there's a few playing across the water and stuff now, so yeah, well, we're really good. Don, as I said earlier, you're definitely no stranger to women's football over here, and now you're involved in Antrim Town, their first season. How did they get on? Oh yeah, well we did really well. We won the double there, so we won the um, Division 5 NIWFA League and then we won the League Cup final. So um, it was great success. Um, it's been hard work, but um, really I've enjoyed, um, along with the rest of the committee and the team and the players, you know, we've really came together and created something amazing. You know, it's, um, we really wanted to put a focal point in Antrim for women and girls football and it's, it's only the start, but it's um, grown very fast at the minute. You've certainly put that focal point in the Antrim. I remember your cup final, the amount of people you brought, I think it was the most attended final was, that yeah, week. Yeah. And also, I have to mention, mention it every time <laughs> I speak to you, the dog. Yeah. The, the, the dog <laughs> is the highlight of everything. There was a dog in an Antrim town sweatshirt and there's two of them, doesn't it? Yeah, there was a little chihuahua. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it was the highlight of my, of my evening. <laughs> yes. What about those fans? Just how great oh. is it that you've got such a fan base behind oh, you now? Such a fan base. We actually um, have made a, at the end of the season wars, we made an honorary fan club um, because they've been pinnacle. And that's just even from online or from coming down to matches, you know, it was incredible. Like you said, it was the highest attendance for the whole week. Um, we had a great ground, you know, we played a Carrick uh, Rangers ground, which was, was a huge ground. Um, but the noise and, you know, it's just the passion and, you know, everybody's on the journey with us together and it's it's good to see. And it is in the back of, um, you know, the likes of the Northern Ireland team and the Euros. And from that, you know, girls just want to get into football and absolutely, if we can deliver it in Antrim, then we will. And what's the aims going forward now? You're not going to stop now? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Definitely, you know, I think we want we want to make sure another successful season. We're key for the club for us is to, to build up either the club from the from the bottom so we have an under fives team an under seven girls team and then hopefully come the new year the plan is to have an under nines and, and so on and so on so when we get you know those little girls will now be the next generation coming through um and then we've obviously got coaches involved as well now so the good thing is that i've also got a little pathway behind me as a coach you know we've got six new coaches at the club who are doing their badges and wanting to strive to be better as well Tony Lee, you're now coaching as well with Willowbank, back to where you started. Yeah. <laughs> the likes of Don are people that have got so much coaching experience. That guess must give you inspiration pushing forward and hopefully following their footsteps a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've just always loved football and I think um, going back to the where it started, it's always good. Um, we're actually trying to get them into a development league now at the minute, so hopefully that works out. Um, they're just sort of training at the minute and, and trying to progress and get better. But I think the next step is a league where they can then go and, and show how good they are. Does it help that they have a coach like you that kind of has so much experience in football that can tell them, you know, I'm only 21, but look what I've done. <laughs> you could follow with me. Um, yeah, I always get a few sleggings for that in training and stuff. I always try and join in and skin a few of them. So it's always funny that way. But um, yeah, I do have some experience in um, trying to give that to them and obviously some of the younger ones that are involved in the senior squad as well. Um, it's good to give them some experience and try and make them better, yeah. And you've only had ever one women's club yourself. You've always played for Cliftonville. What is it about Cliftonville that you've seen change over that time? Um, we've definitely gotten a lot better players. Um, I think once Brendy came in, a few players sort of followed and um, ever from then, you know, we went to Europe last year for the first time. So it's definitely progressing. Um, we won the league and stuff. And then this year we came second. We came second in the All-Ireland Cup as well, the new cup. So we've done really well, but um, we're disappointed not to win more. I think if you're a team winning two trophies in one season and being disappointed, that's just sort of tells you how good we are and um, yeah, we'll want more. I want to hear about all your travels, but before that, I have to travel myself. We have to travel across water because Rachel, as I said last week, who hosted right beside me, is over in uni, over in England, but she's still involved. And she, this week, again, is telling us how those Northern Ireland girls are getting on across the water. Over to you, Rachel.
Hello, I'm Rachel and I'm going to give you a roundup of Northern Ireland players playing in both England and Scotland. In the Women's Super League, Aston Villa are currently 10th on the table. Simone McGill came on in the 77th minute of their last league game where they faced a 2-1 defeat against Everton. In their midweek match, they faced Blackburn Rovers in the Women's League Cup where they won 7-0 and Simone McGill finished off the scoring, scoring the 7th goal. Rachel Furness hasn't featured in recent Bristol City squads due to injury, which also led to her not featuring in the recent Northern Ireland squads for the Women's Nations League. However, Bristol City are currently 12th in the WSL next to face Liverpool. In the Women's Championship, Charlton Athletic are still first in the table. Rebecca McKenna has been making regular appearances for the side. In their last league match, they faced a 1-1 tie with Sunderland and beat Birmingham City 1-0 in the Women's League Cup in their last game week. They'll next face AFC Bournemouth in Round 3 of the Women's FA Cup. Southampton are currently third in the Women's Championship table. Their last match was against Arsenal in the League Cup where they faced a 2-1 defeat. Well, Rafferty didn't feature in this match, however, was on the bench. In their next match in the Women's Championship, they faced Durham. At Birmingham City, they are currently fifth in the table. Ellie Mason has been playing full matches for them, playing a full match in their 1-0 loss to Charlton Athletic in the Women's League Cup. In their last championship game, they beat Durham 3-1. Both Lauren Wade and Jackie Burns are currently at Redden, who sit 10th in the championship table. Lauren Wade has been making appearances across their match day squads. However, Jackie Burns hasn't made an appearance for the side this season due to injury. Their last game was a 0-0 draw against Watford. Cara Hamilton made her move to the Women's Championship this summer, signing for Lewis. Currently, the team sit 11th in the Women's Championship. Their last match was a 1-0 defeat to London City Lionesses in the Women's League Cup. Cara started and played this full match. Goalkeeper Shannon Turner currently plays for National League North Premier Division side Wolves. She's making regular appearances for the side who are fourth in their league table. Their last game was a 7-0 win over Peterborough United in the FA Cup. Next, they also face Hull City in the FA Cup. Also playing in the same National League division is Ella Hackey at Nottingham Forest. They are currently third in the table. Their last game was a 5-1 win over Stoke City and had a 3-2 win in the FA Cup, which leads them on to face Birmingham and West Midlands ladies in the FA Cup. Both Mia Little and Rachel Norney also play in the same division for Liverpool Feds. They are fifth in the, in the table. Their last game was a 1-0 defeat in the FA Cup, however their last league game was a 3-1 win over Huddersfield Town. In Scotland, Megan Bell is at Rangers, who are currently first in their table. In their last match, they had a 7-0 win over Montrose, and they next face Motherwell. Lauren Perry is having a successful time at Montrose, being selected as their Player of the Month and making the Team of the Week twice for the league. They are currently 11th in the table. Last, they face Rangers, where they faced a 7-0 defeat, and they face Dundee United next. That's all from me. Back to Jana. Tony Lee, obviously a huge year coming up for Cliftonville. Obviously, Glenn Touring won the league last year. Cover your ears. He must be coming out for revenge this year. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it was a very long season for us, especially um, getting into the final of the All Ireland Cup. Sorry, I can say that. Um, and obviously going to Europe as well. So I think it, we ended up playing like six or seven extra games than um, all the other club teams. But yeah, I think, um, you know, Glen Torn were more consistent that year, so of course they won it. Um, we won two cups this year as well, so um, it felt like an unsuccessful season, but, you know, there was parts of it that were successful. Um, just as I said earlier, a team that's won two cups and, you know, we were gutted that we didn't win more, but um, yeah, we'll be back out to get them next season. Um, <laughs> hopefully bring that cup back home. <laughs> Donna, obviously the NIWFA has grown so much and even filtered into the Premiership now. Lisbon Rangers are the next team from the Championship to make that move. As somebody who's so heavily involved in the NIWFA, that must make you proud. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they went unbeaten. You know, it's insane from right from the bottom, right straight on through. And I think it was evident to see that they were destined to go to the Premiership. It'll be a tough, it'll be tough for them, you know, but I think just the calibre coming through the NIWFA, you know, there's so much talent there um, and so many new clubs then are, you know, are coming into the league. Um, 
you know, Tony has mentioned there about her own club, hoping to get into the development league this year. Um, and then I, being part of the NIWFA committee, we have seen so you know so much women wanting to play football and girls obviously coming through all their clubs and now are over the age of 16, so want to play senior football and can only make them stronger and better. Tony Lee, is there a little bit of pressure that these new teams are coming in? Obviously there was two new teams last year, this year Lisburn. Yeah, we've played Lisburn twice um, in the Cups the past two seasons and they've done really well against us. You know, um, they are a great wee team. They're all very young and um, they're all involved in the Northern Ireland setup as well. So I feel like they are coming up into the Premiership, which is going to be tough for them. Um, I think they're out hammering teams every week, whereas they're coming in, there's going to be a lot more competition for them. But um, I am excited for them coming up and, and it'll be great for them. Are you excited personally to get back in training and get this new season underway? Yeah, I feel like we've been off for months and it's only been a few weeks. So yeah, I can't wait to get back and get started again. Hopefully we see that happening, Tony Lee. Thank you both for joining me today. It's been a blast and I hope you both have a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thanks, Jonathan. That's us for the second episode of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show. It's hard to believe we're two episodes into a new series already. And that's us for 2023. Everybody out there watching, I really do hope that you have a great Christmas and have some rest and see you in 2024. For now, goodbye.